This week's news has been dominated by one major story. A dossier written by former MI6 officer Christopher Steele contained lurid details about the US President-elect Trump, allegations which Donald Trump strongly denies. Joining us now to discuss this is our reporter Mark Hurst. Mark, the allegations contained in this dossier are truly quite astonishing. Are we any closer to finding out just how this dossier came to be written? Western media concern over the naming of Christopher Steele has focused on the fact He's gone into hiding, apparently fearing retribution from Russian agents. But I think what is more remarkable about this story is that after months of allegations with no actual evidence ever presented about Russian state involvement in US politics, we we now have someone extremely close to British Security and Intelligence Service distributing a dossier implying Russian agents have compromising footage of Donald Trump. The the aim of that material is clearly designed to discredit the US president. The big question is how much did British intelligence know about this dossier before it was published because it's been doing the rounds in Washington DC for months and might MI6 even have had a hand in it? That is a question I put earlier to Professor Anthony Glees, Director of the Centre of Security and Intelligence Studies at the University of Buckingham. And I think we can hear that interview now. Professor Glees, we've heard a lot of speculation and allegations in the mainstream media about Russian dirty tricks and interference in US politics, but the disclosure that this recent dossier published by BuzzFeed and some other outlets appears to originate from a former British intelligence officer. The Defence Security Media Advisory Committee in the UK went to extraordinary efforts this week to prevent UK media outlets from naming this former officer, although his name was still widely published. Is there any indication that Christopher Steele, the former MI6 officer named, has any ongoing relationship with the Security Intelligence Service? And if so, how damaging would that be in terms of future diplomatic relations between the US and the UK? Well, that, again, is a very easy question to put. It's a much harder question to to give a satisfactory answer to. I think the first thing to say is that there are, in fact, two dossiers currently in the public domain in the United States of America, of course, throughout the world, dealing with Russian activity in the United States of America. There is the dossier prepared by the Director of National Intelligence, which the the document that's in the public domain has been heavily redacted and sources removed and so on. It's only really about the judgments that are made. Uh, The FBI and uh, the NSA make their judgments with considerable confidence. Uh, The CIA makes the same judgment, so it was slightly less confident. That is a very damning indictment by the American intelligence community of what they say is Russian interference in the political process in the United States of America. And then the second dossier is the BuzzFeed dossier, said to have been compiled by a former MI6 officer who has been named as Christopher Steele, clearly drawing on contacts who are named in the document. The BuzzFeed document is not marked secret. It's not a government document. It's marked confidential and sensitive. And it is clearly a report that has been prepared for a company. It doesn't say which company, but not for a government. Now, the suggestion, which seems to me to be plausible, is that the man who's been said to be called Christopher Steele, was possible, I don't know, uh, that it is he, he was a former MI6 officer and worked as a business consultant, as many former intelligence officers do. They retire at 55, I think it is, possibly 60, and they can have very lucrative second careers exploiting the contacts that they made when they were in office and the people that they met there for business purposes. If it was Christopher Steele, if, it, if that what is what Christopher Steele did, he is by no means the only person. And indeed, in a way, they are themselves acting beyond the law because British law states that the only person who can identify themselves as an officer of MI5 is the chief of MI6, so-called C. And it's also true for MI5 and GCHQ. No person who has not been the head of the organization may be publicly avowed as a member of the organization. So if a person were to sell their address book based on their saying that they had been officers in MI6, that would be against the law and they would lose their pension, their government pension, 
for doing so. So it's an extremely murky area, but the bottom line is, does the BuzzFeed's dossier look credible? Yes, it looks credible, but it clearly has contained at least one set of details relating to Mr. Trump's lawyer, Mr. Cohen, that have been very strongly and confidently denied. And of course, if one detail of a dossier is wrong, then you could argue the whole of it must be wrong. On the other hand, when you add the BuzzFeed's dossier to the different dossier prepared by the Director of National Security in the United States of America, you have to conclude that there is big trouble. There is big trouble there, not just between Russia and America, but between the new president is going to take office on the 20th of January and his own intelligence community. That is unprecedented. And even if that had nothing to do with President Putin at all, even if it, it, it got nothing to do with Russia at all, it's always of interest to a country when there is disarray in the relationship between the government of that country and those people who are charged to keep that country safe, namely the intelligence community. The only people who will benefit from the current problems are America's enemies, whoever they may be. In recent years, we've seen a lot of intelligence and surveillance work subcontracted out to specialist companies and consultants like the one Christopher Steele was involved with. It's becoming a burgeoning business for many former intelligence officers and analysts. But do you think this latest episode might lead to calls for greater oversight of what these companies are up to and whether there are both legal and ethical considerations that might need to be addressed to ensure they don't subvert democratic institutions? I absolutely agree with that point. And of course, it applies to the UK's intelligence community. They've got to be very careful that those people who did work carry on to abide by the law, United Kingdom law, particularly as the government pays them their pension. They're entitled to that, but it applies to other countries as well. In Germany, for example, once Germany became unified after 1990, all those members who had been officers of the East German Security Service, now known as, as the Stasi, were put into a position where their activities, in many cases, in most cases, were put into the public domain, but none of them were in any way punished or condemned for what they do. And some of them even then got jobs in what had been the West German intelligence community. Others didn't get jobs and went into private consultancy business. And some of them, of course, had skills, weapons skills, explosive skills, and knowledge of, of nuclear facilities that would potentially be of great interest to people who are enemies of the German state. So this isn't just about Britain. It's not just about America. It's about Russia. It's about uh, Germany. It's about any state that has to rely, any modern advanced state has to rely on its intelligence community to deliver security. It would be a terrible irony if people who spent their lives delivering security for their countries went on to second careers where the undermining of their security became their, their prime employment. Professor Glees, many thanks for joining us on World in Focus. 